Hi there. Uh, Are you guys ready? Yeah. Uh, can we see? Yes. Okay. Uh, my name is Oskar Ishil, and I will be helping Ishil translating Turkish through English. And uh, since we both this, since we both have the same name, you can call me Ish. Okay. The translator Ish and Are you guys ready to start? Can you move to your um, right a little bit? Can you move to your left a little bit? Or no, it's there right. right. To right. my left? Right. That's it, like that. Okay. Hi. Okay, good. Okay. Good. How many people fast? What people here from which Great. Okay. Okay. So you can start your presentation. Okay. Uh, first, uh, okay. I I'm, uh, I will speak in Turkish, and she will translate. Okay. Okay. Now we are gonna talk about how Mishnah was established. We are gonna give you a summary. In 2008, people who were working for IBM, they began to uh, get together for making the job conditions better. These workers were fired by 2008 just because they were trying to resist these workers who were fired, they begin to protest um, in front of the IBM building. Uh, those protests were uh, highly ejected by the uh, public. Especially from the plaza workers. After those events, white um, colors mm -hmm. uh, organizations uh, began together and they start their uh, organization for Solidarity Network. And 2010, that was established. Can you guys understand? Yes. Yes. Okay. And why uh, organizations such as Beach that was established in the first place? We should ask this question to ourselves. And uh, people who are working for IT sector are very diverse, such as people from uh, teaching background, graphic design background, engineering, and uh, high school graduates. They are uh, very uh, diversification here. Uh, because of those reasons, professional chambers are not. Uh, they can they cannot support this uh, organization. And our work conditions are also different from each other. Some of us are working for big companies, big companies, and some of us are working for small companies. And syndicates also cannot support this 
labor union can also uh, cannot support this diversification as well. Bu amaçla bu çeşitli Because of those reasons we just talked about, we decided to uh, establish an organization who can support those uh, needs of the laborers. Okay. Okay. Was everything clear? Yes. Sorry. Yeah. It's very, very good. good. It's okay. Quite clear. Okay. It will get better. We are working on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. We will go to second session, second part, and we will tell you about our problems um, in for IT sector. And now I'm gonna uh, read you a paragraph. Okay, now I'm starting. Wherever we go around the world, the problems of IT workers are the same. In fact, these problems don't only affect IT workers. As of now, the problems of both different sectors of the working class are different because they are all equally affected by low wages, severe working conditions, Lack of job protection, flexible working hours, and the subcontracting of our jobs. Moreover, organ, organ, organizers are threatened with retailization and organizing of the job. To add insult to injury, the bosses use economic crisis, crisis that we did not create as, as an argument for mass layoffs. What was this program clear? Yes. We are constantly being subjected to undefined games played in the name of performance evaluation. Furthermore, we not only face desolation, depression, distrust towards everything, everyone, but also we face job sickness. Even that's due to non provision of job security. Okay. Uh, And we got together to solve all of these problems as big organization. Here is how to develop these solutions. In solidarity with each other, to be informed about our rights and legislation, to educate each other, to share our work experience, to avoid being alone in this huge sector, and then to make others for the solidarity of IT workers. Thus, we set up information technology workers solidarity network in Turkey, which called Bicta. We came to be able to implement this program. And what are we doing? We'll give you a short summary now. Most important, most importantly, we try to speak loud for laborers who are facing big struggles from the bosses uh, who are working in the very bad uh, working conditions. We try to advocate those laborers. And we share our experiences during the weekly uh, meetings. And we are very actively using our mailing group. Mm -hmm. In spite of these uh, difficulties, we are getting together on every Wednesday and we are setting up meetings and talk about those subjects as well. And we are publishing 
We are publishing pamphlets uh, weekly, periodically, uh, and those are short summaries about what we just talked about on Wednesday nights. We are sending short summaries. And we are supporting other labor um, struggles. Because we are aware of uh, this, we cannot solve this problem uh, with only IT workers. We should all get together and support each other. That's the only way to solve these huge problems. And this is the most important part. We are giving each other free trainings. Um, everyone volunteers in one subject. For example, if I know graphic design, I teach uh, the training about graphic design, which gives presentations about coding and such. And also we are training other laborers who are not from IT uh, sector. We are teaching them how to use technology and how they can speak out uh, by using technology such as social media and mainly those kind of stuff. And we have one very most important goal, which is we want to set up international IT workers solidarity network. This is the uh, one important mission. Because the IT industry has spread out through all country uh, world. And we are all connected to each other with the uh, work we are doing. We are producing together. And IT workers have the same problems and similar ex experiences even though we are coming from different backgrounds and from different countries. Biz aynı koşullara farklı bölgelerde çalışan fakat koşullarda çalışan olmalıyız. Uh, we are living in the different uh, areas, but we are working in the same conditions. So this is how we are connected with each other. Uh, ve uh, bu konferansdan da uh, bu konferans da uh, bu açı ve esene uh, ders destek and we, we are expecting a support from ITWSN to enlarge this big community to support each other. And our Facebook account was censored, and we wanted to give you details about this. As we talked before, we are supporting the other protests from the uh, other neighbors. And the text and what text neighbor part of the first of them. And some uh, text and protests were belong to workers who were working the textile in 
industry, they were fired uh, just because they were seeking for their rights. And we visit them not to just support them. And uh, we created a blog for them. Uh, yeah, we, we created the framework for their blog. Summarize. And we created market materials such as ads, uh, you know, promotion materials. We just graphic design for support that. Sonra bizi bizi Texas avukatları tarafından bu afişlerin kaldırılması hep zaten hiç de sen bu afiş kaldırılması bu kimi değil yani. And the bosses were working Texas send us an email warning email please pull us to. Those uh, messages. And when we log into Facebook account, and when we log on to our Facebook account, uh, it was told that those. Uh, Graphics were removed just because it was damaging image of the company. And afterwards, we couldn't we couldn't access our page anymore. Then Facebook we did this. And we condemn Facebook for that behavior towards. The labor uh, organization. Um, this was all that we want to say to you. And if you have any questions to us, we're happy to answer. Okay. Uh, one question we have is: uh, who was who pressuring Facebook? Uh, to remove your your page, your solidarity page with the Texan uh, workers. Did you ever find that out? Okay, let me tr translate this. The bosses of Texan. So the bosses of Texan were demanding the Facebook remove the, the web page because of the support you were getting for the workers True. of Texan. Because according to CEO of the organization, the text and the word text was in the first place on the Google and the right text it was on the top place. In our in our blog it was in the top uh, session. I see. Are there any other questions here of the uh, speakers from Turkey about what's going on? Uh, uh, do you, are you doing your, uh, do you have your own free software or are you developing a network so that you won't be controlled by the companies like Google or Facebook uh, okay. or computer companies? Okay, we're searching just a second. Can you and we have this corporate website on Vichda and we protect it till this day. It's still working and we can reach out to our uh, members. It's, it's fine. But are, are you talking about something else besides well, the corporate the, website? The issue of, of, of free software, Richard Stallman just gave a presentation, Richard Stallman, Okay. about uh, the danger of uh, uh, companies, uh, internet companies and uh, Apple and all, and computer companies controlling through cloud, for example, controlling all the information as proprietary. Mm -hmm. 
and then using that to spy on, on workers and also to find out where workers are, what they're doing, and to uh, intervene in their activities. So uh, the question is, is the tech workers uh, organizing a, a network or a movement to protect themselves uh, in organizing and defending themselves against uh, these companies who control the, who, the monopolies who control the technology industry? That's a great point. Just a second. Yes, we understand your concerns. Uh, we think about this issue as well. But first of all, we want to tell about uh, free software, open source software. Open source software. Yeah. And we think that. Um, as long as the IT worker is not free, the uh, software will not be free. They are all connected to each other. And when IT worker uh, take ownership of what she or he is creating, Okay, uh, if IT worker doesn't take ownership of what he or she is creating, then he cannot take control of the production, the total production, and he cannot uh, measure this or control this anymore. And free software cannot uh, exist without this. And the other question is, are you in touch with any IT workers around the world who have a similar perspective of organizing IT workers on a global level to, to fight back and to connect with each other? <laughs> and we were just thinking about this and this is our first day to just be in touch with you and this is our first touch to uh, get set up, and set up and get organized and others will come. Okay, very good. Well, now, what are the exact conditions of IT workers in, in Turkey? Because I, I was there actually and uh, at the uh, syndicate uh, electrical engineers and there are many IT workers in Turkey who are working for companies in China and other companies around the world. Mm -hmm. So what other conditions? I also, oh. oh sorry about that, go ahead. So we want, what are the specific conditions of the IT workers in Turkey? Uh, we have flexible working hours. Sometimes it gets more than 12 hours. And we continue to work at our home to just get the job done. And uh, performance evaluations are not very fair. Um, they try to cut our wages and uh, they're just not being fair about performance evaluations. They keep the wages very low that we can barely survive. You know, pay rent, eat. We we're just surviving. We don't have anything for uh, other stuff. Now, uh, in, in the European Union, in Germany and other countries, they have contracts uh, for tech workers. So True. maybe we can talk about. Uh, your, your connection with uh, European uh, unions who are organizing tech workers, what kind of contracts and conditions they have. And also, in Brazil, Brazil recently passed a law that it is illegal for companies to send email to workers uh, past their hour, their eight hours. There's an hour with women. Oh. So is there any, uh, uh, there may be an international effort because it seems like tech workers are tethered like they're telling oh, okay. to the internet that they have no control of their work right. hours or conditions. Okay, uh, let me just explain this to Shil and others. Uh, 
saati açtığı zaman hani eve gidiyorsun ya ağzına. Ondan sonra patron işte iş yerinden bir sana mail gönderemiyormuş. Yani bu saatte yetişinde seni kesinlikle rahatsız edemiyormuş. Ayrıca Almanya'da diğer Avrupa ülkelerinde e, işçiler birleşmişler, kontraktör olanlar. E, ve böyle hak aramaya başlamışlar. Ama sonuçta onların da iş güvenli cesur. Evet. Sonuçta yani bu kasalar olduğunda da onların da iş güvencesi yok ve onların çoğu işi Çin'e ve Hindistan'a kaydı işte yapıyor. Aktör oluyor ve onlara da çok fazla işe çalışıyor. Etkiliğinden çok fazla artmış durumda. We should think that these improvements are great, which is happening in Brazil, but it still doesn't prevent those issues of, you know, having uh, getting low uh, wages and uh, job security, those sort of stuff. And uh, now, IT workers are, have been outsourcing from China and India. So, uh, ve onlar çok az uh, ücretle, Çin ve Hindistan'da işçiler çalıştırıyor. And with the very low wages, uh, laborers are working. IT laborers are working from China and India and Turkey as well. And this problem can be solved uh, globally. So are IT workers uh, going to your website and beginning to become aware that they have to organize collectively? Yes, we do. <laughs> and first of all, we remind them that they are laborers and we are on their sides. <laughs> and we have trainings and we also emphasize in our during our IT trainings as well. Okay. And and we have three hundred members already. Three hundred members. Uh, do you have plans to set up a streaming channel on the web where you can have discussion and debate similar to what we're doing here? Forums. Forums. We think that it's dangerous because uh, they are monitoring us, the firms. Uh, they're constantly looking and we don't want to get in trouble uh, because we're all working for the companies. Because they can retaliate. Yes, they, retaliate they already do. I mean, How have they, they do that? Have there been examples where they retaliated in Turkey? <laughs> Okay, we're thinking so. <laughs> how, how do they retaliate? Uh, how do they retaliate? For example, have they fired people? for trying to organize? What forms does retaliation take if there has been retaliation? And there was, there was a forum. Uh, we're going to give you an example. For example, I want to change my job and the company, a company, asked me for a job interview and I go to this site, it's, it's called Kohe Company and you write Company A and it gives you a summary about this company. Sometimes uh, people who were working on this company writing reviews, this company starts, you know, they have very low wages, I hate working here. Some stuff like, like that. And if they know who you are, uh, they fire you. And they close this, uh, they condemn, uh, I'm sorry, they censor this uh, website. It's 
not running anymore, it's closed. Ah. So workers, tech workers can't get their information out about the conditions at their, fa at their companies. True. Because the tech True. companies prevent them from, from getting that information out by censoring it on the internet. It's not only for tech companies, it's for every sector. That's how it works here. Okay, well, that's, that's why having open source, having in, in, independent, uh, collectively owned uh, uh, internet servers and having your own uh, network is very important so that there will be no censorship of your stories and your issues. Okay, this part was very important. Let me just uh, tell them.
there should be a network, uh, something like LinkedIn. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. So well, we can well, all get. Well, I, I think there needs to be a link up with the tech workers and free software movement, Richard Stallman and others who are interested in fighting for dem democracy, democratic control of the internet by the sure. users. And that would be a very valuable thing to have a link between tech workers and those fighting for freedom on the internet and free, and free software without control of corporations. True. <gülüyor> Ve işlerinde de çalışma koşullarında e, iyi, yani iyi götürücü birlikte çalışabilmek. Ishi is saying that uh, those those sort of uh, those those sort of uh, you know establishing something like LinkedIn may may not be a good solution because uh, they are always spy on us. It would be good to just get into firms and uh, establishing syndicates, uh, labor unions, and fight for the labor rights. Okay, good. Well, if there are no other questions, I want to thank you for being here. And we appreciate solidarity and uh, tech workers unite worldwide. So, thank you very much. And are you guys going to uh, support us? With our movement. Absolutely. That's why we're having this conference and this panel. Because okay. Tech okay. workers all over the world have to unite. And do you have any IT workers over there? Yes, they're here. There are IT workers. <laughs> And we expect them to help us uh, to establishing ITW SN. Okay, well, well, we'll put the information out to them and let them know. And maybe what we can okay. do is get articles by tech workers from around the world on their situation, mm -hmm. and we can have it on one website in different, <coughs> different languages. True. So great, that way, great we can that this is a global struggle. The companies are global, and tech workers have to be global as well. We already started this, and we're going to send you some summaries about what we have done. Uh, we will we will send you uh, email about what we have done in the social media in our corporate sites. Uh, we sent you we sent you summary already, so you can check your mails. So it's gonna show you. And we're gonna put that up on the Labor Tech website too. Okay, great. Sounds great. And please uh, ask the people over there to join to our group. We will be very glad to have them in our uh, organization. Okay, you have an international organization. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you so much, Steve. See you. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay.